Welcome to our lecture series, Math 1210 Calculus 1 for students at Southern Utah University. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Dr. Andrew Misseldine, and I will be your professor for this course. Calculus 1, without me overselling it, is probably going to be one of your favorite mathematics courses you're ever going to take. And why is that? Well, there's probably two types of students out there, and you're one of them, I imagine. First, there's some people just love everything mathematical and scientific and analytical, and so you just gobble this stuff up, and calculus is going to be more of that delicious, logical candy for you. Um, from other people, other students might be a little bit more skeptical, like, when am I ever going to use math? Uh, we learn all these hard things, but when am I ever going to use it? Let me, let, me talk to, uh, let me talk to that group of students just for a moment. So I like to liken, I, I like to compare calculus to the Karate Kid movies. The, that is the original ones from the 80s. I grew up watching these movies. I loved them a ton, you know, the kicking and the punching and things like that. And so a really quick synopsis for those who are unfamiliar with the movie. Uh, there's a teenage boy, Daniel LaRusso, who moves to a new town. He's having a hard time fitting in. There's a girl he likes, but it turns out there's another guy who likes the same girl and who belongs to a karate dojo known as the Cobra Kai. And so in their rivalry, the Cobra Kai have a bad habit of kicking Daniel's butt all the time. Um, and so after he gets the tar kicked out of him several times, uh, a wise old Japanese man who befriends Daniel, his name is Mr. Miyagi, he takes him under his wing and he promises he'll teach him karate so that he doesn't have to get beat up all the time. Well, when Daniel starts going to Mr. Miyagi's house to learn karate, Mr. Miyagi is never there. He leaves notes and tells Daniel that he has all these chores to do, like uh, some of the things Daniel has to do is he has to wax all of Mr. Miyagi's cars, which he has a lot of classic cars. Uh, he has to paint Mr. Miyagi's fence. He has to sand Mr. Miyagi's deck, and just, just to name a few of these chores he has to do. And these, this goes on and on and on for days and days and days. And so after a while, Daniel just gets extremely, extremely frustrated with Mr. Miyagi. It's like, why am I doing all these chores for you, right? I thought you were going to teach me karate. And so what then Mr. Miyagi does for Daniel is he changes the context. Daniel believed he was doing all these chores when all reality, Mr. Miyagi was having him practice muscle memory, various karate moves like lifting up his arm and waxing the car, uh, just to name a few ex examples. And so Mr. Miyagi shows that all these muscle uh, motions that Daniel's been doing over and over, these repetitive motions, when in the right context, are defensive karate techniques, which is the first step to learning karate, you have to defend yourself. You can't go on the offensive if you can't protect yourself. And so this was a huge paradigm shift for Daniel, who learned, oh, I was doing all this hard work, but that's how you get good at karate. Why do I share this story? Well, it's a great movie. You should check it out sometime. But this is exactly how many of us have felt in previous mathematics classes, like maybe pre-calculus or college algebra or high school algebra. We learn all of these algebraic tricks and we practice them over and over and over and they get repetitive and they get tiresome and we get fatigued from it. But like Daniel, we've been learning how to paint the fence and wax the car, but we were like, I wanna learn karate. The good news is I get to be Mr. Miyagi. And in calculus one, we finally get to take those algebraic skills you've been rehearsing probably for years and apply them in the right context uh, to solve some very useful uh, real life problems. Calculus is sort of like the first step in approaching many, many mathematical problems we see in um, science, physics, chemistry, engineering, just to name a few things there. All right. And so because of that, those algebraic skills we've practiced in pre-calculus settings are really important. It's really the start of where we're going to do calculus. So the first chapter in our lecture series is going to be dedicated just to reviewing topics in pre-calculus, that is college algebra and trigonometry. And depending on you as the student will depend on how much review is actually necessary. Some of you came fresh out of college algebra, fresh out of trigonometry, and you're good to go. You have all these skills mastered and for which the homework is just going to feel like busy work, just practicing things you already know. Uh, many of you, on the other hand, uh, maybe it's been a while since you've taken a pre-calculus class. Some of you haven't taken it since high school, which could be years. Some of them could be decades. It depends on the student, right? 
Uh, and that's okay. There's, there's, there's no judgment there. But some of us might be a little bit more atrophied in our algebra skills because it's been semesters or years or a long, long time. Even those who freshly came out of college algebra, uh, maybe, you know, that was a hard class. And, you know, maybe we just need more practice anyways. Um, and then with trigonometry, some schools don't even, some high schools don't even teach trigonometry. And so some of you are getting thrown into this class with really no trigonometric background whatsoever. Uh, and so because of, because of this sort of gap, a huge gap uh, for many of you in terms of prerequisites for this course, we're going to spend the first two weeks of our series uh, learning, well, not learning, but reviewing uh, college algebra and trigonometric things, uh, reviewing all these topics. And so let me show you our first lecture page here. You're going to see several videos, and this is just the first lecture. You will go through several lectures, of course, throughout this series. But we see a couple of lectures here. Because some of us might not need as much practice as other, I have labeled uh, some of the lecture videos differently. So now each lecture video, when you click on the tab, just click on it, it gives you a title, it gives you a description, it gives you the video which you can watch. This title and description is to help you uh, with your notes also if you need to return to the videos in the future. So in this first chapter, chapter one on this review of pre-calculus, some of the videos I've labeled as optional. Because again, if you have taken college algebra and trigonometry, which if you got into this course, you should have, because that's the prerequisite, you've learned all of this stuff before. It really comes down to how much of a review do you actually need uh, to, to do this class? It's hard to say, I don't actually know it. That, that's sort of an individual thing for you. And so there are some things that I think are really essential that even if you're like the world expert on this, we probably should still review it. Um, those ones you won't see any label there. There are some other topics which I think are worth reviewing, but many of us might not need a detailed review, in which case I'm labeling those as optional videos. Um, so if you if you do feel like you have a stronger background in algebra, then by all means you can skip the optional videos, not a big deal. Uh, I would still encourage you to label the ones or watch the ones that are not labeled optional, because again, some of them are optional, some of them are not. Uh, and then kind of go try to gauge yourself from there. Some of you who feel like you're going to be the top echelon student, like, you know, college algebra has never been a problem for you. You might just jump straight in the homework and fall back onto the videos when you kind of get stuck. Like, oh, I don't remember how to do this. And that's, that's okay for chapter one. Because um, like I said, chapter one is just going to be a review of functions and trigonometry. When we get into chapter two and beyond, when we actually learn things that are new, things you shouldn't have seen before because they're properly calculus subjects, then I would encourage us to watch all of the videos in the order they're presented on Canvas before we begin the homework. Uh, but I will allow us to deviate from that strategy for this review chapter, which is chapter one. I should also mention that on every lecture, there's a link to uh, lecture notes, the notes I use in a traditional face-to-face -face lecture uh, for which you can download those, read through these on your own if you would like to. Um, if you want a very abbreviated uh, run through through the lectures, you could just read the lecture notes and get all the same stuff you get from the video uh, as well. Now, I should also mention that the videos that we're going to see in chapter one were originally developed for my uh, college algebra math 1050 and trigonometry math 1060 uh, courses. Uh, that's okay. I mean, the, the math didn't change as we review those things, but if, if you ever hear anything mentioned like, this is Math 1050, well, that's just because uh, the video was reused right there. And this is actually an advantage to us because while I've linked all of these videos uh, on our lecture pages for your review, like I said, this is if you need sort of like the average review of materials. Um, if you need a more, more in-depth review, which might be possible, that's not a big deal, not, no, 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 no problem there whatsoever. If you need a little bit more review than what these videos are offering, then click the on-screen links you can see in the YouTube videos, like the one you see on the screen right now, and you can link into the entire uh, library for Math 1050, and you can scroll by topic and find any, anything you need to review as we go, not just for this review chapter, but any time in the future, like, oh, I don't remember how to a factor or a quadratic polynomial, you might be surprised and maybe that needs to come up. You can always go back to the trigonometry or the college algebra lecture videos and take a look at those whenever you need that just-in-time um, practice.